This is the Matchbox number 65C Kloss Combine Harvester made by Lesney in 1967. A rather simple and cheap model to obtain, it possesses quite a lot of detail and engineering. A large yellow wheel harvester in front was designed to poke through the bottom so that it turns when you push the harvester across a surface. Originally possessing rubber wheels, it's rare to find one today sporting them. Almost all have rotted away over the last 50 years. While not necessarily a favorite of mine, this is one of the models I would love to have seen cast given all the raised details it possesses. I've convinced myself that it had to have been made in two parts and then glued together. However, there's almost no evidence of this that I can point to, so I'll have to assume it was cast in one shot. According to my Matchbox Bible, the harvester came in two variations in color, a dark red and a bright red. This one seems to be the bright red. Very early versions had five lines of text and no whole cast into them. Later versions, like this one, had four lines and a whole cast. I found this particular model amongst a large lot of 15 cars I bought at an antique store for $5, so I paid less than 50 cents for it. So with all that in mind, let's get started on this restoration. The first thing I'll need to do is remove the black plastic wheels. This is due to the axle covering the spun post. I'll remove the axle with a pair of end cutters and then drill and tap the post to receive a 2-56 button head screw. With that done, I can now remove the screw and then the base. Interestingly, this base doesn't support the axles in any way and it's just there to cover the bottom hole and probably give support to the sides. I find it strange they didn't cover the entire base, choosing to leave the back open. I'm sure this was a cost saving feature, but one might think they could have left the entire bottom open and saved even more placing the model number or name on the harvester blade. That being said, the base does give the combine a much more substantial fill than if it was missing. As you can see, I'm removing all the rest of the axles, including the one on the harvester wheel. I'll be replacing all of them with new brass axles, both for its ease of use, but also for the fact that it won't rust and gives a nicer aesthetic look overall. Once the axles are removed, I'll spray the entire model with aircraft paint remover to take it down to the metal surface. The paint that Lesney used was some pretty tough stuff, so I usually need to use a toothbrush to get the paint flakes out of tight corners. For the really stubborn paint, I use a dental type tool to scrape the paint away. Here's how the harvester looked after the paint was removed, and I'd gone over it with some 4 aught steel wool to remove any paint residue. You can see Lesney put quite a lot of detail in this model. I've never seen the real life harvester, so I can't comment on how accurate this casting is, but it looks pretty cool. When the paint is gone, I'll wash the casting in soap and water, and once it dries, I can begin painting. I thought I would try painting it in red enamel, the paint most often seen in rattle cans. Given the detail in the hard to reach places of this casting, I thought I might have difficulty using a rattle can to paint it, so I decided to decant some of the paint into a cup, and then apply it via an airbrush. This worked, but I had to really thin the paint down on the last couple of coats to get it to flow through the airbrush reliably. It really needed some paint retardant, but I didn't have any for enamel paint, so I had to go as is and deal with a lot of dry tip. I'm just not as experienced in enamel like I am in acrylic. That being said, the paint came out okay, but it will need some polishing in the future. I can't polish it now, as most spray paints need about two weeks of cure time before they harden to the point you can polish them. With the body painted, I can move on to the axles and wheels. The back two wheels are made of a hard plastic and are very small. To clean them, I'll put them back on the old axle to hold them, and then using some lighter fluid and a paper towel, I'll try to remove all the dirt and grime. I'll then repeat this process for the front two yellow rims. When the rubber tires were lost, these yellow wheels could no longer touch any surface. As such, they are in perfect shape, while the back wheels are a little bit more worn down from play. I've gone ahead and taken the liberty to pre-cut the 1 16th inch brass rods to size. I have a video going over how I make the axles for these cars, and we'll leave a link below. I'll be using my lathe to do all this, but alternatively, you can use a drill press. I'll leave a link to another YouTube channel, Marty's Matchbox Makeovers, where he can show you how to use a drill press to get the same result. That all being said, the point here is to mushroom one end of the rod. If you're curious like I was about how Leslie made this plastic harvester wheel, well it turns out to be two identical separate parts with indexes to allow one part to attach to the other. This no doubt made for a much more simple injection mold compared to trying to make the entire part at once. 
The genius behind most of the metal and plastic parts Leslie made was an individual by the name of Jack O'Dell, who unfortunately passed away in 2007. If you like history as much as I do, I'll leave a link to a very short but very informative web page with lots of interesting pictures of the Lesney production line Jack designed. But to get back to the restoration in progress, you can see here that I'm putting the axles and wheels in place and just making sure each axle length is not too long or too short. Once I have the brass rods inserted, I'll place the casting in between a tailstock mounted tool and the tool mounted in the lathe chuck. I can then turn on the lathe and begin turning the tailstock wheel off camera. This pushes the tailstock tool into the brass rod and compresses it, mushrooming both ends. It doesn't really require a lot of pressure, but I was worried about bending the long rod inside the harvester wheel. Shorter axles are obviously easier to mushroom. I find it helps to apply pressure in short bursts compared to trying to mushroom the end all at once. Since it's not very interesting watching me order repo wheels from online, I thought I'd go a different route and make some new rubber wheels for this model. Sort of taking a cue from Toy Poloi, I went to my local hardware store and bought a bunch of O-rings and grommets. The original wheels looked like O-rings and I figured that would be what I would use. However, I ended up using a grommet to make both wheels. I found that I could cut the grommet in two and then using some plastic nippers trim the remaining rubber. This cut side would go to the inside and not be seen. I could then stretch the grommet halves over the wheel hubs and then align them. This ended up making a really nice and really cheap rubber wheel. In fact, the wheel size was spot on and I could push the casting and see all the wheels turning while the front harvester blades were also spinning. So once you get the axle issues figured out, these Matchbox models start to become much simpler to restore than what they were previously. I sort of regret not going with the acrylic paint on this one because I know I can get a much better result. However, given what I paid for this model, it's a good practice using enamel. Of course, I'm always interested in your thoughts, so feel free to leave them below. Also, if you have not seen Marty's Matchbox makeovers, then I will leave a link to his channel below. He's a new YouTuber, and practically hundreds of people have emailed me pointing out his channel. So, if you like Matchbox restorations, head over there and subscribe to his channel. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.